you need a tripod. How many times have I told you? Actually, you might not. Watch this video and I'll explain why. Let's do this. morning okay this is a uh, probably gonna be quite a short video and you can see I'm actually down the seafront I'm actually at uh, Eastney Pier just behind me there I'm coming for my daily walk will be I don't do it daily I probably should do it more because see how far I can get out on this pontoon before I even get waterlogged or I slip in the water I don't want to go very much further than this to be fair because that looks a bit treacherous not even down as far. This uh, this area is usually underwater. Uh, tide is going out, and when the tide does go out, you can actually get around the corner, go round towards Eastney Beach. Uh, but today's subject, I haven't done a vlog for a while, by the way, so I'm quite looking forward to this. Today's subject is about having a tripod. Now I have a tripod on there somewhere. It's around that side. Where is it? I think you can see it. It is there, I'm sure it is, yeah. <laughs> and I've got it with me, but I'm probably not going to use it because look how sunny it is. Now let me dispel a myth. Now, I'm guilty for being one to, uh, well, to, be, to proclaim this myth to be true. And the myth is that as a landscape photographer, you need a tripod. And, uh, you do, really. You really do need a tripod. Because most of the time we shoot, it's not this sunny. Look how sunny it is. Ah, backlit. Most of the time we're, we're doing our shots, we're at golden hour. Now the sun's going down, we're losing a lot of light. If we do things like long exposure stuff at that time of the day, if we're doing things like time lapses, which I do a lot, you absolutely need, it's a prerequisite, you need a good tripod. It's just the way it is. But look at the current situation with COVID and what's going on at the moment. I'm stuck in tier four, which means I'm only allowed out for exercise. I'm not allowed out to do like a whole photo shoot. So I kind of go handheld. That thing there is giving me enough light. It's horrible. It's giving me enough light to have a really fast shutter speed. And if that's the case, then I don't need a tripod. Because if I've got a really fast shutter speed, what's going to happen? I'm going to take a shot so fast it's going to capture and stop any movement just is what it is uh you just can't get artistic so there's caveats obviously if, you, if you're handheld and you go too slow you're going to get a handshake it's just it's just a given but if you're out taking pictures and if you still you can still program your stuff in i mean i know i was coming down here today i didn't really want there to be lots of uh fishermen on the pier but I knew I was coming down here to do this video and walk. I'm getting my exercise. I'm not stopping. I wasn't going to get my tripod out. I've only bought it because I'm going to be doing a little bit of video for my uh, my landscape photography academy shortly. And I need to talk about gear I'm using. And I'll talk about my landscape photography academy a little bit later. But I don't need, I don't need my tripod. I'm walking. I'm not stopping. I'm walking. I'm getting my exercise. Why can't I have a camera with me? And this is the point, I know a lot of photographers at the moment are staying indoors. And I get that, I am too, I'm not going out, I'm not doing photo shoots, I'm not doing any workshops at all. Uh, I've had to postpone or cancel my workshops. But I can still go out and do exercise, right? And I can still bring my camera bag with me on my back, stop and get my camera out, take a shot or something, and carry on. Why not? So there's not going to be a lot of B-roll to this video, mainly because I don't want to set my camera up, having to walk back past it loads of times. That's not, in my mind, considered exercise, but I will get a little bit of hyperlapse when and where required on my phone so I can add a little bit of transition, you know, B-roll in there. That'd be quite nice. Uh, so let's get my camera out and uh, we'll walk with you. And I'm going to take a shot of the pier as we walk back past it towards the car. Let's do that. Hold on. I can't, I can't hold you and get my camera out of my bag. See you in a bit.
Okay, so this is going to be a little bit tricky because I'm going to try and set my camera up on the fly. Now I've got my your back. I've got my lens cap on there. Let's take that off. Ooh, 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 right there. Put that in my pocket. Now then, I'm handheld. I'm walking back past the pier. Let me just get my backpack on my back properly before I drop everything. So, let's have a look at what settings I've got at the moment. Ooh, not good. So I want to be, my normal current settings, or my normal base settings, it should be around ISO 100, which is set at. I want something like F11, now set at. And I'm just gonna use the meter in my camera, if I point the direction I need to be pointing at, and half click my shutter, it's gonna give me a reading on my meter and I'm well overexposed, so I need to speed my camera up. And I'm now getting a speed of 1 125th of a second. Now that's perfect, because anything slower than that, I'm gonna start getting some handshake or some body shake in the camera. Luckily with this system, I've got body, you know, in-body stabilization in the camera. But what I can do, I'm, at, I'm in autofocus as well. I'm gonna set my focus to somewhere around one third up it's probably going to be quite near my horizon sorry you can't see my head there i was showing you the camera but you can't see it because it's back there anyway so i'm going past coming back past the pier and these pontoons i'm going to get a bit of a let's go a little bit wider 24. it's not easy doing this one-handed and i want to try and incorporate these things in here and Boom. Fine enough, I had it set, uh, set with a two second timer, which I don't really need if I'm handheld. Uh, but it is what it is, it's up from last time when it was on a tripod weeks ago. Okay, that's it. No big shakes. I'm gonna head back to the car. I've got a picture. Uh, again, I've, you know, I don't know, I mean, there's people who are gonna walk around for, for miles and miles with their cameras. That's not really the point of this. The point of this is, I wanted to come down here because it's quite secluded anyway. There's not a lot of people down here, although there's, there's a couple of fishermen on the pier. There's a few dog walkers. I can walk and be isolated, that's fine. Uh, but I wanted to get a picture. You know my style of photography, if you know me at all, I'm not one for walking around for ages, getting lots and lots of images. I want that one image to take home and have a look at. Now obviously I don't normally shoot this time of the day because there's gonna be a lot of harsh shadows. But we're living in times where we have to adapt and improvise and overcome. Uh, it's one of them things. We've just got to do what we've got to do. So I only really wanted one, one image. I knew what I wanted to get. I researched before I come down here what the tide was doing. I've got a weather app that tells me it's actually a really nice day. You can look out the window and do that, I know. But it also gives me wind speed, uh, direction of the wind, all that kind of stuff. Gives me a little bit more information for me to take uh, take away and digest and work out what's best for the photo shoot. And I was hoping to get around, before I lose my, my camera, I was hoping to get around the, the side of East and walk that way. But I'm actually going to walk back to the car now and pack my, pack my kit up. I've done my exercise for the day and I've got a picture. Landscape photographers of the world unite, right? We're in trying times, we've got to improvise, adapt and overcome. And uh, it's the perfect way to do that. Now, handheld, if you're in tier four in the UK, you shouldn't be doing a full-on photo shoot anyway. It just isn't allowed. That's not considered exercise. Uh, but if you're handheld and you're walking and you stop quickly to get, get a shot, handheld, I don't see a problem with that. And I think that's perfectly doable. I'm gonna get back to the car and crack on. Before I go, uh, very soon, I've got my online landscape photography academy going to be rolling out. I'm recording a bit of video for that today. Uh, the lectures are looking to be pretty awesome. Essentially, what you're getting is me the way I would teach on a workshop or a one-to-one -one workshop. And we go from absolute beginner all the way up to the more advanced photographic techniques. 
obviously there's quite a few modules so there's quite a bit for me to do so i'm looking at uh, an end of march rollout for that and the best thing about it is i can reach people all around the world i don't know why i haven't thought about doing this before i'm actually really excited uh, the feedback i'm getting at the moment from some of the people that i'm showing some of the content to is amazing they're really happy with it i'm getting really really good good quality feedback and it's uh it's going to be an amazing course if you want to join me on that course pop across to my website there's a link below this video uh sign up to my uh newsletter and when i roll it out the people who are signed up to my newsletter are going to get a whole month where they can sign up with 35 percent off and then the rest of the world who haven't signed up to that will then have to pay full price sorry after that month and the best thing is i'm going to be adding modules throughout the year adding modules throughout the co you know coming years as well with different modules as i do more stuff i'm going to be adding night photography i'm going to be adding all kinds of other bits and pieces you will get that for free the the extra stuff is all going to be part of the uh of the of the one single cost you pay there's a monthly option as well uh, but the one single cost you pay uh, you then get access to everything for life it's pretty amazing if you're interested have a look at my website if you've got any questions just pop me an email there's a there's a link to a contact form on my website uh, and i'll try and answer them as best i can okay it's been amazing i'm back at the car i'm gonna get cracking and i'll see you boys and girls soon take care bye Still here, nice. It's good that you're still here because I want to tell you a little something. Those people who are avid followers of me, I want to give a little something back. And to do that, it means working alongside you online because a lot of you can't make it to my workshop. So I've just set up a Patreon account. It is patreon.com forward slash Andy Hornby Photos. So Patreon is a platform where we can create stuff together, even if you're halfway across the, the globe. And I can learn and teach alongside you, literally alongside you. There's so many things I could do to help you get your photography just to that next level. It is awesome. If you can make it to one of my workshops, I've got a website. Go to ahphotographyworkshops.uk and have a look, see what I've got going on. But if you can't make it to one of my workshops, Patreon is a really good platform where we can create stuff together and we can take your photography to another level. So if you like what I'm doing and you want me to learn alongside yourself, see you there. Take it easy, have a good day. Bye.